Good evening and happy New Year's Eve to you all. We can't meet in person, but here's still a sermon, a thought for this evening as we go into the New Year's Day. The name Jesus heralds a new beginning for you and I. Now, when we think about names, what do you think of when you hear that someone has made a name for themselves? For example, when you hear the name Hershey, you think of chocolate, don't you? I know I do. How about Walt Disney? You think of that theme park and that giant mouse running around. Or you might think of Ronald McDonald and you think of hamburgers and fries. This evening we think of another name, a name that carries us, carries us into the new year. It heralds a new beginning for us into the new year and every day. And that name is Jesus. When you hear the name Jesus, what do you think of? Probably loving, peaceful, kind. And those are all true qualities about God, the Son. But when we hear Jesus, there's even more to it. His name means Savior. Jesus is the Savior of the world. And when we consider that name, we hear now the words of the Gospel, Luke chapter 2, verse 21, which says, And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph had to follow the law. They had to take Jesus to the temple and they had to have him circumcised. And on this same day, something special had to happen. According to the law, that was the day that baby boys would receive their name. Now, this is different because today we give the names right away in the hospital. But this was a very special religious ceremony commanded by God so that that firstborn son was dedicated to him. And Jesus was given the name to bear the burden of all people in the world. He receives the name Savior. Now, once this name was given, it was written in a book, and the Jews used this book so that it showed that they were of the Israelites, the people whom God gave the promise. This book, it also represented another book, which is in heaven, the book of life. So that every name that is written by faith in Christ is written in the book of life. That person has salvation. Now, that name was written and that was very important. This was commanded by God. And in connection, Jesus had to be circumcised. This was the first time that Jesus bleeds for you and I by keeping the law. He had to keep this. He had to fulfill the covenant which he himself gave. Now remember the angel, Gabriel, told Mary and Joseph that name. They were to give him the name Jesus. And Jesus is indeed our Savior from all our sins. In fact, he's the only one in the world who can save us. There's no president, there's no dictator, there's no ruler, there's nobody. There's no economy, not a single name or thing in this world that can save us other than Jesus himself. He saves us from our sins. He forgives us for our sins. Peter says in the, God, in the, in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 12, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Just think about this for a moment. Jesus' name to us is such great news, and yet the name that he is given is commanded to be given. He shall be named Jesus. He shall be the Savior of the world. He will save his people from their sins. When we think about our sins, and we're going into the new year, we might think, there's a lot of baggage that I have. And when we think about our sins, we think of iniquities, trespasses. We were fugitives. We were those who broke God's law. We trespassed it. And if you imagine like those old Western pictures with someone's face on it, a reward and their name, 
That name signified exactly the person who needed to be taken down for justice. And our name and our face was before God, and it had a great penalty. We deserved death for our sins. But Jesus comes and rips down that image, and he takes our name, and he erases all of our sins. He forgives us for all that we've done this year, the year to come, and that in the past. Jesus promises that in his name, you are forgiven. You are forgiven, and he promises this. He dies for the whole world. He is the Savior for all people. So that when you think of how God looks at you and your name, your name is cleared with him. That broken relationship, when he hears your name, he no longer thinks of you as that sinner, but in Jesus, as his holy child, his holy citizen, by faith. As we go into the new year, you might wonder, as I get older, will people remember my name? You know, the truth is, maybe people may not remember your name forever. You might not be in the history books. You might not be the Hershey or the Walt Disney or the Ronald McDonald. But in Jesus' name, you will be remembered. For all who believe their name is written in the book of life in heaven. In Jesus' name, God has goodwill, a gracious disposition toward you. He does not forget you, for you are his people. In Jesus' name, he promises then to bring you into eternal life with him. As you go into the new year and as you walk through every day, remember the name of Jesus in whom you pray, in whom you sing to, and you worship. That in his name, your name is cleared. In his name, you are forgiven. In his name, you have eternal life. Happy New Year. Amen.